I hear anybody read my bio, I always start to bite my tongue and go, oh. It's a, it's a list, right? We're, we're, we're made up of so much more than that. The one thing that she did uh, uh, leave off, and probably the most important thing, is I'm also, also the mother of two. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a 13 year old son, so they definitely keep me busy. <laughs> So why are we here today? What is going on in that crazy city of Irving that you always read so much about? Right? A city of, what, 235,000 people? One of the top 100 cities in the country, or 92nd largest, I think. Um, we also have the most diverse zip code in the country. We have pretty much everybody uh, in our city. Our ISDs are made up of more than 70% of children who speak English as a second language. And yet, we're also the fifth safest city in the country. <coughs> so we tend to be doing some things right. I'd like to think so. Um, of course, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and start the video that kind of started this whole thing off. This is back in February of this year. Listen, tonight, justice told about like nowhere else in this country. North Texas is now home of Now we go to a CBS 11 exclusive tonight. Justice told about like nowhere else in this country. North Texas is now home of the first Islamic tribunal in the United States. Jeff Paul, I've been hearing tonight to show us how this all works, Jeff. Well, the first of its kind being that other states are now calling in this mosque and its religious leaders, asking them how to set up their own court. Well, tonight we did get our hands on the tribunal's constitution. And you have a look inside on how leaders here plan to administer Sharia along with existing federal and state laws. Oh, it's where Muslims bow their heads in prayer. Because the city was now being accused of putting this tribunal together. 
as the lead magistrate in my city, I took a proactive approach and I thought a fairly fair approach. Now I want to read what, what I do is I do what you know all elected officials do these days, right? We go to our Facebook accounts. Because if I if I talked to our local media, how much of it do you think is really gonna make the paper? Come on, nothing. Yeah, I love that. They, yeah, yeah. Maybe that much, right? But you're not gonna get the points out and you don't control the message. Um, and what I have found is it's not always an accurate report. In fact, it's typically not an accurate report. So I went to my Facebook posting and this is what I wrote. And I'm not gonna read all of it, but I just said that the, the, the court was not enacted by the city of Irving. You know, we have laws as the mayor. I took an oath to uphold the laws of the state of Texas and the Constitution of the United States. I respect the freedoms guaranteed under the First Amendment and believe that protecting fundamental constitutional rights and ensuring that individual rights are not violated or denied is essential. Currently, Texas Supreme Court the precedent does not allow the application of foreign law that violates public policy, statutory, federal laws. However, now that this issue has emerged in our community, I'm working with our state representatives on legislation. I saw, where did he go? I saw our state representative, Rodney Anderson, could happen here. Uh, on legislation to clarify and strengthen existing prohibitions on the application of foreign law in violation of constitutional or statutory rights. American citizens need to remember that their rights are guaranteed by the Constitution, and I believe that no one suggest, suggest, should subjugate themselves to anything less. While I'm working to better understand how this court, and I put it in quotes because it's not really a court, but that's the way that it has been reported, will function, and who will be the subject to its decisions. Please know, if it is determined that there are violations of basic rights occurring, I will not stand idle and I will fight with every fiber of my being against this action. Our nation cannot be so overly sensitive in defending each cultures, each other, other cultures that we stop protecting our own. and our guaranteed rights reign supreme in our nation, and may that ever be the case. Is anyone offended by this statement? No. no. Do you find this to be Islamophobic? No. 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 Do you find it to be pro-American? Yes. yes. Pro-law? Yes. yes. Would you not expect every single elected official who put their hands up and said, I'm taking an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States and these states of Texas, that's my oath. Would you not expect that from everybody yes. who's an elected official? Yes. You know what we don't do a good enough job, though? Is holding those elected officials accountable. Yes. But part of the reason they be, because what got reported and what was actually said and done is not what people read. In case in point, I put this Facebook picture out, yeah, I put that posting out, then all of a sudden the media started reacting. I was attacking this peaceful religious tribunal. I had, it wasn't even an Irving. How could I create this idea that this was an Irving? It wasn't even a court. Why was I calling it a court? They weren't practicing Sharia. What was I thinking? Where did she get these crazy ideas? Did anybody see that report? And, and, and it was obviously in tandem with the mosque that was in our thing because they were, they, they were interviewed. It was right there. But all of a sudden, it's getting attention. It's not the type of attention that's re required that they want. So then they start backing, backing away, and I become the scapegoat on mm -hmm. Keep going the local media coverage. D <coughs> Magazine, the Dallas Observer, <laughs> Fort Worth Star Telegram and my my favorite, the Dallas Morning News, really started taking some what I would consider cheap shots. But because this is what we do as elected officials, you will never make anybody happy all the time. I had learned that long ago. I was have been an elected official since 2004. Rodney backed me up, right? There are always going to be somebody mad at you for any decision you make. But you know what? It's not an excuse not to make a decision, and it's not an excuse not to do what you know is right. That's right. Amen. So, I'm helping my work, and I started working with their state reps. Matthew Bernoldi was paramount.
He was phenomenal. Kenneth Sheets was great to work with, and so was Ron Anderson. Because of this posting, I had a, a request from the imams from our, our mosque in Irving to meet with them. And they had eight, nine people that came. And Representative Rinaldi, uh, Sheets, and Anderson were all at that meeting with me. They told me that they found my posting to be Islamophobic. They wanted an apology, and they wanted me to issue a correction. And I said, okay, tell me what part of my statement you find so offensive, and what needs to be corrected? And they couldn't do that. They just said the overall tone. <laughs> so, you know, I, I said, well, I, I'm going to push you on this. I need to know a little bit more about what you need about the tone. Well, we just don't think that it's that, that you're representing all, all, all people. <laughs> and it's making us, it's making our mosque, you're putting us in a dangerous situation. That you, you're, you're, we're going to start receiving threats, or we are receiving threats, and we really need you to issue a retraction. I said, look, I'm not about to define what your tribunal is or isn't. And trust me, you don't want me to do that. The only thing that I can define is what the city's involvement in it is, and that's nothing. Now, if you are so concerned that people have a misunderstanding, or it's being misrepresented in the press what you are, Matt Rinaldi had, you know, was working on this bill, the American um, Laws for American Courts. And Representative Rinaldi said, if this is a concern that you want to correct, we are introducing this legislation at the state. We would love your support. You can come down and say that you are not this type of a court, that this is what you believe in, this is what you stand for, and that should help. And they didn't say no. They said, well, send us the verbiage. Send us the, the bill. Um, we will look at it, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll see if we're going to support it. And what every representative said was, you'll have an opportunity. If you don't like any of the wording in it, let us know. We can change it. You want to flip to the next slide? This is, this is basically in a nutshell what the American Laws for American Court says. It's specifically for family law. So it's divorce, child custody, division of marital assets, where women typically do not have as much rights. They don't have as much rights in the Sharia law court as they would in the U.S. courts. But in any kind of type of foreign law, but not specific. To, to Sharia. If this was not picking out any law, this was saying any foreign law that violates a, a any foreign law is void to the extent that the application of the foreign law violates a fundamental right guaranteed by the Constitution or the statute of this state. How can you argue with that? We take it for granted that it's happening. And if it is, okay, if it's if it is um, repetitive in nature, how many laws do we pass all the time that are repetitive in nature? No harm, no foul, right? But the harms that it could prevent are serious. Yes. So the worst that we could happen by passing this bill is it's repetitive. Where's the fight? Why would you not come down and fully support not having basic fundamental rights violated? Well, we sent the uh, copy of the wording to the members who had come to the, um, the meeting. We didn't hear back from them. Three weeks later, I put on the agenda uh, for the city council to support the resolution that was down at the state for the American Laws for American Courts. We received, the, the, by the time we posted, there's like another almost a week before um, we actually have the uh, uh, agenda item up. So we posted this out. It wasn't until the night before that we got about 150 of the same email but from 150 different addresses, email addresses that they have posted. And then on Thursday, press had been called, and we had hundreds of people coming down to tell us that we were bigots, that we were hateful, and that we were racists. All because we wanted to support a law that said that the application would not violate the fundamental right guaranteed by our Constitution and our state. You can go ahead and go to the next one. This specifically was a law that has to do with family law, the ALAC bill. So in a court similar to a Sharia law court, a woman's testimony is equal to half 
That is immense. So you'd have to have three women testifying, making the exact same testimony to overcome that of a man. A woman cannot get a divorce. She has to ask permission. She has to be represented by an imam who has to grant her the right to even ask for it. Now, is that really what we're going to say is the equal, equal part of what we're talking about in our Constitution, right? Equal protection under the law? I would argue that it's not. You can go to the next one. Um, Aliyah Salam has come down to our council several times now. Um, and she told us right before we were voting on it that we had a choice between diversity, hatred, fear, and bigotry. So apparently diversity trumps our Constitution. And I think that really is the core of it. We can't support our Constitution otherwise we are hateful, fear, and bigotry. And to me that was just, they're throwing out names and labels because it makes it so much more difficult to fight that. As a mayor, you put in a defensive position, and I didn't play that game. I just sat there and I nodded. I think they were trying to get some kind of rule sparring. It wasn't going to happen. And this I just kind of liked it. I always thought that was a cute. But when we actually had when we actually had our vote, it was a five-four vote. Five-four the resolution, four against the resolution. Now that has got to tell you something. I mean, if we are so divided that just sticking up for basic fundamental human rights, you know, it would be off by one vote, that's kind of scary. What, what they had told us is that uh, the way that they ended the meeting when we voted was they had several members of um, the audience who spoke with the press and said, we're going to take this to the media. I'm sorry, we're going to take this to the polls. We're going to let them know how we feel about this on election day. You can flip to the local media coverage. So the Fort Worth Star Telegram was the first that came out after we had our vote. Um, they talked about it being a purely unnecessary bill. Um, again, they said it was an overreaction. You know, I'm sorry, it was a hysterical reaction. <laughs> hysterical reaction by the urban mayor and city council to one face handling of disputes. It's caused undue stress and division. And again, here's the thing. We passed a resolution to support American laws. If no one had come down to city council to oppose it, would this have caused any division at all? Would anybody even have known about it? I've been on city council since 2004. Nobody comes to our meetings. <laughs> when people come, there's press and there's something that's, that's at issue. Have this group supported this, this bill? Or have they just been ignoring it? This would never have made the paper. This would never have made the press. But a national furor over Islam has touched down in the heart of North Texas, where Irving's mayor has accused mosque leaders of creating separate laws for Muslims. Okay. Then, you know, it's giving me advice that I should work to unify my city, which, you know, I always appreciate advice from the media. Thank you for the next <laughs> The Dallas Observer, Beth Van Dyne and her anti Sharia fear mongering are not the long story of Irving. 20 years from now, nobody's going to remember Beth Van Dyne. That's fine with me. <laughs> D Magazine, we'll get back to that one. The Dallas Morning News. Now, the Dallas Morning News had a lot of things. I was on the front page all the time. And we had our vote on this on Thursday. Friday night, I got a phone call from the local reporter for the Dallas Morning News saying that they wanted to do a feature story on me. Now, I'd just been reelected, so there was no more information. I mean, they rang me through, you know, whatever hurdles they need for that. I've been elected since 2004, so it's not like I'm a new face on the scene. But they wanted to do a, a piece on me, and they wanted to interview me. Now, what I said was, go ahead and email me the questions. I'm doing interviews on that <clears throat> at Summers Foundation Board, and we're doing interviews with students. But go ahead and send me your email with your questions, and I'll work on it over the weekend. I didn't get it until Sunday. He didn't send it until Sunday afternoon. What, what I was told was going to be a Monday report. Now, what does that mean? That means that I'm going to spend my whole Sunday, when I was going to take my kids to movies and dinner, filling out questions that he might put in half a sentence to make it seem fair and balanced. The questions I got were about this long. And they, I mean, I, if I had answered all of them, literally could have been a book. But the way that 
continuously, they have written probably about 20 articles on this, and it's always Van Dyne's attacks on a Muslim religious panel. But flip to the other one. Because I spent that Sunday, and I thought, okay, I could either re reply the way I felt, or, you know, which would be, like, I'm not answering these questions, this is ridiculous, I could ignore it, or I could answer the questions. Well, after taking three and a half hours to answer the questions and sending it to him, Ruining my entire Sunday, I again did what you know we are forced to do at this point in time is went to my Facebook page. I said, I know I'm not gonna get I know I'm not gonna get a fair and accurate assessment in this. So I'm gonna put out for everybody to judge. You know, the unedited version. So I put all the questions out there. Questions that he asked me. Right. <laughs> and my answers. It wasn't just the questions, but I also put my answers. Questions like, do you have full custody of your kids? Oh. Rumors are you're dating. Tell us about your partner slash boyfriend. Oh. Like, okay, so I, and I respond, this, this is inappropriate. But all of you out there who've read this stuff and who have been active in social media, God love you. Because you have kept my spirits up and you have caused me great laughter at times, which is really necessary. So questions like, what was up with the questions to Mayor Van Dyne? Looking for a date, dude? <laughs> or my favorite, okay, but what about what color panties does the mayor wear? This is the stuff we need to know. Avi, TMZ called, they want their questions back. <laughs> so all of you out there who do, I mean, I, we read it. I promise you, we read it. We might not always respond to it, but that kind of stuff really does make us feel better. Because we're not in a twilight zone. It's not just us, right? <laughs> so you can go ahead and uh, flip to the next one. I wanted to get to this one in particular because, first of all, they did this story. This is Imam Zia, who is the Imam in the Irving Mosque. Um, and the headline was, you know, an anti-Muslim sentiment in Irving and the Imam who has to tolerate it. And it was basically, it was a hit piece. But in there, specifically, he says, Van Dyne's confusion is one of willful ignorance. All of the information is available online. If you want to know what the tribunal is and what it is not, it has a website. Now, I had already read the website. But my question was, did he? Did anybody in the media actually go and read the website, see what was being purported as this tribunal standing for? Because quite frankly, I don't want you to take my word for it. I, I, I don't want it to be seen as if I am interpreting it. Go directly to the source. So they did. They, they created islamictribunal.org. If you notice, experienced judges, which was highlighted. Now, none of them were elected, but they're judges now. Go to the next one. And you can't read that, but on the very top it says, meet the attorneys. The funny thing in Texas, if you call yourself a court with judges and attorneys, are you practicing law? Now, none of them had a law degree, and none of them were um, licensed by the uh, Texas State Court. That's an issue. But nobody in the local media even talked about it. Every single time I was interviewed, I made that statement. Not once was it ever reported on the unauthorized practice of law. Now, if you go to the next slide, oh, I'm sorry, well, under practice areas, they had family law, which they, they said that they didn't handle that, but they handled family law and divorce cases, product liability, business, and real estate litigation. Now, this was a tribunal that was constantly being com compared to like a cap of annulment. Now, I don't know how many people here got annulment, and I'm not gonna ask for a show of hands, but, the priest charge you, and at the same time that you went in there, did you ask him questions about product liability cases? <laughs> That's what I thought. It is different. It is very different. And while I try to have a little bit kind of a funny edge to this, all of this is happening is really serious. But if we don't at least have some kind of sense of humor about it, it is impossible to even talk about. If you go to the next, this I'm going to read because I think it's very important. All of this was cut and pasted from their website. This is not my interpretation. This was not the media writing about it. 
This was this tribunal writing about what they did. The conflicts that the Uman, as a Muslim nation, um, faces have to be solved by taking into account jurisprudence in its Sharia or law. With this understanding, there is no secularism or detachment from the tenets of faith in all Islamic injunctions in regards to the legal field. Muslims here in America are obligated to find a way to solve conflicts and disputes according to the principles of Islamic law. Not American law, not local laws, but Islamic law. It is the intention of erecting this institution in order to set a precedence that will be emulated and duplicated throughout the country. Now, I have been told that I'm a hero of some freaky French group that thinks that we are trying to, you know, Islam is trying to take over our court system. Emulated and duplicated throughout the country. Where did anybody ever get that idea? And then this may be incrementally developed by educating ourselves and also the legal professionals in the country. So understandably, it may naturally take time to find its way to be commonly accepted. I did not claim that this was in my city. I did not claim this was a court. I did not claim this was following the Sharia. They did. And I think it's really important that we remember that. What you're reading in the paper, what's actually happening. You can go to the next, next slide. So, Breivar did do an interview with them, and, and I was actually surprised that they agreed, they agreed to be interviewed. But when they talked about it, when push comes to shove, we follow Sharia law. So they, they are admitting it in certain media, but, but it's being unmitted in others. Um, you know, they said that they're not satisfied with the tribunal's decision, that they don't, you know, it's, they don't have to accept it. However, are there any attorneys in the room? So if you have, raise your hand, Tim. <laughs> so, and by the way, Tim O'Hare, you, you and I have been through this before. When Tim was the mayor of Farmer's Branch, he, I was on the city council, we were having a very similar issue with illegal immigration. So we both know what it's, been, what it's like to be called all these things. And good luck, by the way. I'm totally supporting you on your run. But the attorneys in here will, 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 you know, should be able to back me up that if you have, you go into court to a judge and you have a signed document that says we mediated this, how difficult is it then to say, wait, I didn't mean it? When we say non-binding arbitration, does that really exist in the state of Texas? If you've got two parties that agree to it, they sign a document and they bring it to a judge, it is very difficult to get that eradicated. My mother is a family court attorney. Uh, we have had numerous discussions in and out about what this means. But Robert actually talked about it. Then, again, under this idea of women not having the same rights in this court, they specifically said the husband can request a divorce. This is from the imam. The husband can request a divorce directly from the tribunal. The wife must go to an imam who will request the divorce for her. So we can't even speak for ourselves. He just called it the path, two paths to the same result. <laughs> All right, you can go to the next one. <laughs> I'm going to just let that slide speak for itself. <laughs> because one of, the, one of the things that shocked me the most when we had our city council meeting, we had members, we had women who came down and called me some of the just really nastiest things and said that, you know, I can't believe you're supporting this. You should be supporting other things that we're pushing for for women's rights. This is fundamental. Yeah. Is it, is it necessary to be on the opposite side? How can you claim to be pushing for women's rights and yet support an institution yep. that looks at women as less than? Yep. Having less than half mm -hmm. the, the um, ability of a man to I testify in court. It just, it, that does not make, make sense to me. You can go to the next one. So I started looking and really trying to find out as much as I could. I talked to attorneys, I talked to constitutional law professors, to constitutional lawyers, judges, professors, and I was shocked by how much was not coming out in the press. And by the way, all of this stuff is open and available. I found um, a Twitter account because I had been, uh, I had been connected. The imam had sent some fairly negative um, tweets out and put my name on them. 
You go to the next one. But this is the religious leader of my community. This is the man who has to, quote, tolerate me. These are the things that on his public Twitter account he has posted. The leader should work to unite, not divide. I absolutely agree, but continue reading. It talks about the dramatic loss of followers. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the UK. Um, surprise, another Christian terrorist. Whenever he talks about um, a non-Muslim killing somebody, it's always a Christian terrorist. Um, Kenneth Sheets was, was fairly funny in all this. He was, he was very protective. And um, when the imam started coming out with some rather nasty tweets, Kenneth Sheets stuck up for me and responded back because I was being accused of lying. And Kenneth said, I was in the meeting, I know what I heard. I had open ears and an open heart, and I know what I heard. This was his response back, I'm waiting to be arrested for apparently breaking the law. And arbitration still running too. You can go to the next one. Privately, it seems everyone is sick of Israel. If you go to the Twitter account, there are a number of very strong anti-Semitic comments and tweets. But in the same breath, he'll say that anti-Semitism raises its ugly head in Irving because we support basic fundamental rights. Go to the next one. Um, things like you haven't persuaded me enough to be American. Um, talks and brags about the uh, Irving Mosque being one of the biggest mosques and about to become the biggest mosque in the U.S. And then this one really bugged me. They don't mess with Texas next time, Pam. You know she's talking. He's talking about Pam Geller, right? As if you know her having two terrorists that came to potentially shoot her and everyone in the audience should be a a comment that she shouldn't mess with Texas. And yet I was the one who's being accused of attacking this Islamic tribunal. You can go to the next one. This says if you're offended by this more than this, your form of stupid may be incurable. <laughs> and I <I'm> said. <set. laughs> The next tweet is my favorite. Love Texas and the people of Texas. How about we secede and make it into a Muslim state? Oh my God. But look, it's followed by a smiley face. That's right. <laughs> so what was the outcome of all this? Where, where have we gone from this? We actually did have an election, and one of the members of the city council who supported this election lost. Keep in mind, this was a 5-4 vote. I'll put before you today that if we had another election, if we had another agenda item at our city council, this would lose. And um, Imam Zia took full credit for it. He just said the Irving elections influenced heavily by Muslims vote, well done people. This is in your, this is in your state. This is in, in, in your neighborhood. This is right down the street. Now, I am not here to suggest by any any measure that we need to be hysterical. But I think it is far too late for us to pretend that there is not people that there are not people out there who would really prefer to do things their own way and not follow our laws. And it is far beyond my ability as a mayor to make all the other mayors, city councils, state reps, senators, and our members in Congress, and God knows not the President, to be able to follow our own laws. I was up in Philadelphia last week. I took my kids up there. We went and visited Liberty Bell. We saw Independence Hall. We went to the, um, the Constitution, uh, the museum that's right across the street. We read all the articles, the amendments. And my kids are 16 and 13. You know, I still, I still kind of own that part of how they believe until they get out into the, quote, the real world. But it astonishes me how wonderful our country is. And people, when you go outside, it's kind of similar to Irving. You get the people inside Irving who don't like it and they complain about it. But you go to New York and they're like, oh, you're from Irving? Oh, that's a great city. Oh, yeah, you're going to go to TFW Airport, ExxonMobil. We need to, as citizens, realize it is fleeting if we do not stick up and defend our rights, our constitution, and our laws. And I feel like sometimes it's like we're a frog in water. 
right? You don't feel that because it's changing its baby steps off a cliff? Well, we're getting closer and closer to that cliff. And the only thing it takes is a little bit of drive, a little bit of backbone, and saying, you know what, that's enough. No more baby steps. We are the state of Texas, we are the best country in the world, and we're going to stay that way. So, you can go to the next one. Constitution is the guide which I will never abandon. That is words that I live by. So I'm going to have a few minutes, I've got 10 minutes for questions and answers. I thought I saw somebody's hand up. Yes? What's the composition of uh, your city council as far as Muslims on the council? We do not have any Muslims on our council. What's the question? We wanted to send questions and answers for both your Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I guess we're going to save um, questions and answers until when, when Tracy comes up. But um, I really do appreciate you all taking an interest in this. And there's a lot that I didn't cover. Um, and I will be here afterwards if anybody has any questions that they don't want to ask in, in front of the, of, the, of the group. But I do want to thank our state representatives because they held true. They did what they said they were going to do. And I want to thank Tracy as well because she was down there in Austin fighting a good fight, keeping us up to date on what was going on. And that a like bill, she's going to tell you a lot more about it, but when that didn't pass, I was in my car that night, livid, going down and asking these two women what happened. Because standing here, I had never, I'm the first woman who's been elected as mayor in the city of Irving, but I have never relied on my gender to ever get a vote. Because I always look at it, I did not be, because I've I, I stand for what I, I stand for. I let you know what I tell you what I'm going to do and then I do it. I'm not in it for any agenda purposes. I'm in it because I think it's important that we all stand and represent and give back to our community. I would love more people to do that. And there are some really strong representatives out there that do that. And we need to support them as much as we can. And those that aren't, we need to hold accountable. So I want to thank all of you for your interest, for your support, for your passion, and definitely for your patriotism. And thank you for having me here.